for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this video I'll be running through important information and methods that are not only aimed at providing safety for you as a person and those around you, but also safety for your yeast and your equipment. There are various different types of pressure fermentation vessels out there in the marketplace, and the most commonly sold ones are made of plastic, but naturally vessels are also sold in stainless steel construction. These units, irrespective of brand or construction, will work in the same way when it comes to pressure. Usually it will have a main body that is built to withstand pressure, a way of adding pressure, and usually two ways of actually removing it. It is the removal side that is of course the most important aspect from a safety perspective. There are various safety guidelines to follow in general that I will run through, but before I show you this visually, let me run through a general checklist first. Firstly, always be sure to follow the guidelines of the product as shown in the instructions. Please understand that when using pressure, you really need to be sure that you set things up carefully and properly. Any vessel that can be put under pressure is deemed to be safe for use, but the human element can still present danger if you make some errors. Another important point is that particular attention also needs to be given to the type of cleaning products and temperature of the water used when cleaning. In regards to stainless steel vessels, chlorinated cleaning products in particular will damage the stainless steel and should never really be used. This includes bleach and some pink powders. When it comes to plastic fermentation vessels, one of the most common issues is prolonged exposure to sodium metasilica. This is found in many cleaners like PPW and contact time should be limited to an absolute maximum of 20 minutes. If you do decide to expose your plastic fermenter for longer than this then you will compromise the plastic and this of course will lead to issues. Let's now look at safety testing before use. Here is the Kegler Kegmenta. This is a pressure vessel that I use regularly for pressure fermentation that I will use to show testing. I run through these tests before adding anything that I wish to ferment under pressure and I strongly recommend that you do the same before each fermentation too. Whichever vessel you use, the single most important piece of safety equipment on your vessel is the pressure release valve. Your vessel will be originally supplied with one that has a rating that suits the vessel. This will be a PRV that either matches the pressure rating or below. If you change the PRV to one that is allowing pressure beyond the rating of your pressure vessel, then frankly you are heading for an explosion. Do not be that home brewer that blows up his pressure vessel and then tells everyone he did nothing wrong. It is your responsibility to ensure that you have the right PRV if you have removed the original one supplied. Next, remove the PRV from the lid and make sure that it and the section that it screws into is clean and clear of debris. Once you are satisfied that the PRV can operate unimpaired, then you can screw it back into your lid. I suggest that you take this step very seriously, because by using a clogged or blocked PRV, you run the risk of explosion. Again, this is your responsibility to yourself and those around you. Be sure to know that no pressure vessel is safe from this, plastic or stainless steel. These checks are vital for all. It is also vital to understand that the PRV is designed to be the last line of defence and it is not a substitute for a spunding valve. When fermenting under pressure always use a spunding valve. Manually removing pressure each day via the PRV is also not a smart practice. For the next test you will need to add pressure into the vessel. Naturally before you can do this you will need to ensure that the top lid is attached correctly and securely as well as any other parts on your vessel. I am adding pressure using a soda stream bottle and trigger system that is attached to a ball lock post which makes this very controlled. Add pressure until you hear the pressure release valve initiate. I have left the sound in the background so that you can hear mine. Eventually you will hear the vessel take the strain. This is normal but it is an important sound to familiarise yourself with and soon after this you will hear the PRV release excess pressure for safety. Congratulations, you have now checked your PRV properly and you are now using your vessel safely in the knowledge that it cannot explode. For the next step, add a spunding valve on top with a gauge and adjust to the level that you intend to use for your pressure fermentation. Leave this for a few hours with periodic checks to observe that you have not lost any pressure. If you have, then spray the areas where you could lose pressure with either soapy water or diluted sanitizer like star sand that foams. In the case of the Kegmenta, this will only be the lid itself, but on other fermentation vessels, it could be other places too. Inspect each area and look for these areas that stand out. The soapy water or firming sanitizer will show you these clearly. 
Please do note that with plastic fermenters where you have plastic on plastic and metal on plastic, you really do not need to be too forceful with connecting. I know that for some this feels like the right way to do it, but you can end up over tightening and causing potential damage and then leaks that can only be fixed by part replacement, particularly when using metal on plastic. Once you have established that you have no leaks and that the vessel is holding pressure and that your spundy valve is set where you need it, then you can move on to the next step. Yes, this is the final test of your PRV, pull as shown here and you'll hear the air release. This is not just the sound of air though, this is also the sound of reassurance. As shown, do this several times to ensure that all pressure is now released, so that the lid is now safe for removal, ready to accept your next brew. You have also now completed the testing needed for safe use of the equipment. For quick reference, here is a list of the steps in order. Some may wish to take a screenshot of this, at least for reference initially. You will soon get used to the pattern required here though. Furthermore, if you find yourself needing to move a plastic pressure vessel, then I also recommend that you release the pressure first. This will protect the product in case of accidents, knocks and bumps. Should you damage a plastic pressure vessel, then it is highly recommended that you perform a hydro pressure test to be sure that the vessel is still up to the task. Hydro tested is suggested by some manufacturers to be performed once every two years and kits are available for sale to make this easy. Let's now talk a little bit about yeast safety because frankly yeast is the star of the show, and its health is paramount to the success of your end beer. It is important to understand that yeast in general would really rather not be under pressure at all. Do your yeast a favour and do not go overboard with pressure. Applying more and more pressure is not the name of the game here. The goal should be to simply find a pressure where your yeast is happy, and you end up with an end beer that is nice and clean. Equally, do not think that you should use pressure fermentation as a way of quickly carbonating your beer while fermentation is going on. There is always time for that later. As with any fermentation, our primary concern should be with yeast health. When yeast is under pressure, you have an effect on its ability to produce esters and fusel alcohols, which, if this is part of your plan, is the upside. But on the downside, you are also inhibiting its viability and its growth. The more pressure you apply, the more you have an effect on these four areas. Another final key point in the direction of your pressure vessel is that by not using high pressure you are going to prolong the life of your pressure vessel itself. This particularly applies to pressure vessels made of plastic, but it also applies to stainless steel products also with their higher level of pressure tolerance. Naturally the most important thing to keep in mind here is that you should stay safe and keep brewing. If you have not joined already then consider joining this YouTube channel's Facebook group. We have over 8,000 friendly and helpful members of all experience levels. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions, then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate, then please like this video on YouTube, and if you've not done so already, then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!